Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are reviewing the King Rune KP3S, a small form factor 3D printer that costs only 180 US dollars, but packs in features like a direct drive extruder, linear rails, a touchscreen, and much more. Is that price a good deal, or do you need to spend a little extra on a 3D printer? Let's find out. Before we begin, this KP3S was provided for me to review by King Rune. They aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. So let's get started. The King Rune KP3S is a filament-based 3D printer with a print volume of 180 millimeters on all three axes. It is a cantilever design, meaning that the x-axis is supported on only one side, and the hot end is suspended over the bed. The hot end comes with a standard 0.4 millimeter brass MK8 nozzle, and is fed by a 1.75 millimeter filament from the direct drive extruder located above it. It uses a Titan extruder design, which does a good job of feeding the filament, and allows for the use of flexible filaments like TPU. In front of the hot end is the 24 volt cooling fan. That fan is powerful and does a great job of cooling the prints. The X and Y axes use linear rails, which provide smooth and accurate motion and should hold up better over time than traditional rubber V-slot wheels. And speaking of V-slot wheels, the X-axis attaches to the Z-axis using V-slot wheels. The Z-axis lead screw attaches to the motor, which is located in the base of the printer. The X axis end stop is adjusted using a spring-loaded screw in the base of the printer. Moving down towards the base, we find the KP3S's flexible magnetic build mat. The mat has a slight texture to it, and it is very grippy when printing with PLA. The flexibility makes it very easy to peel prints off once they finish. I had no trouble removing prints, but I did have issues removing single layers of filaments, like skirts or cancelled prints. They stick extremely well, and it took some work with an X-Acto knife to scrape the filament off. The bed itself has the magnet, and four screws in the corner which are used to level. The KP3S does not come with auto bed leveling, but manual leveling was simple. The touchscreen walks you through the process. As mentioned before, the Y-axis also uses linear rails, and is belt driven by the motor in the back. To the left of the bed is the 2.4 inch full color touchscreen. The touchscreen is responsive to the touch, and has great viewing angles. I had no problem seeing the screen in normal operation. The menus are simplistic, but nicely laid out. I found all of the options pretty intuitive, although it lacks features like material preheats, filament load and unload, or any way to adjust the firmware settings like acceleration. Now the keen-eyed among you might have noticed that there is a giant power supply located next to the printer. The KP3S uses an external power supply, where the power cable connects to the top, and a single cable plugs into the base of the printer. The power supply also contains the on and off switch. This is one of the main drawbacks of the KP3S for me. The external power supply effectively adds an additional 50% to the footprint of the printer, and because it's separate, means that the printer is no longer easily portable. Another problem with portability is due to the lack of an integrated filament holder. The KP3S comes with a pair of rollers, which you place to the side and rest your spool on. It works pretty well, but it does require a fair amount of space next to the printer. I would also highly recommend printing a filament guide, as the angle of the filaments will grind away the plastic of the extruder over time. After a couple hundred hours of printing, mine has worn away considerably. In order to access the base, you need to remove the screws holding on the Z-axis, and then the screws holding on the cover can be removed. This reveals the King Rune KP3 version 1.3 control board, a 32-bit board with TMC2225 stepper drivers. Those stepper drivers are extremely quiet during printing, and overall fan noise is pretty low. It's very comfortable to be in the same room while the KP3S is printing. The last feature is power loss detection. If the printer loses power mid print, you have the option to resume once power is restored. Clicking continue will heat the printer back up and resume the last layer that was being printed. This is one of the better implementations that I've seen. I cut power five times during this cube and it resumed with relatively few defects. The KP3S comes partially assembled, with only the Z-axis needing assembly. The Z-axis extrusion is screwed in from the bottom, and then the Z-axis lead screw is connected to the motor. And then the power supply can be unwrapped and plugged in, and we're ready to level. As mentioned before, there is no auto bed leveling on the KP3S, but the touchscreen makes it easy to manually level the bed using the four screws. Overall, it took about 30 minutes to assemble and start my first prints. I use Kira as my slicer of choice, and the KP3S has a built-in profile. It even has a neat model of the 
printer, useful for seeing exactly the orientation your object will print. So let's see how well the KP3S prints. You can find the models, materials, and setting I use for all of the following prints on 3dprintlog.com, linked in the description. First up, the sample Guardian statue G-code that came on the SD card. And they turned out beautiful. There are no blemishes. The smooth contours of the cape are consistent, and the sharp angles of the hex pattern on the armor show no signs of ringing. It really set high hopes for this printer. And the 3D benchies continued this trend. These turned out great. The hull is smooth, which I attribute to the even cooling from the cooling fans. The tops of the doors and windows show no drooping, and the top surfaces are even. Really impressive showing. The octopus is a great test for bed adhesion, as each individual segment of the arms needs to remain firmly stuck to the bed and the KP3S had no issues with it. The arms printed flawlessly, and the tolerances were tight enough that no segment overlapped. The rest of the prints was just as smooth. Now it's time to push the boundaries. 180mm might not sound like a lot, but it's more than enough for objects like this. This Yoda bust was printed without supports in 22 and a half hours, and it is gorgeous. The bottom of the ears and chin have a very small amount of drooping, but it printed much better than I expected without any supports. I love the details and the wrinkles, and the top surfaces are consistent, without noticeable stair-stepping at a layer height of 0.16 millimeters. The KP3S can handle specialty PLA as well, like this Wing Victory statue printed in Overture Rock PLA. The rock effect is awesome, but if you look past that, you can see the KP3S performing extremely well. This combination of printer, model, and filament is perfect. So let's continue to push the boundaries with this dice tower. The pillars are thin, tall, and unsupported. I fully expected them to start to fail at a certain height, and they did. The KP3S started to struggle once the pillars got about 70 millimeters in height. However, I wanted to test how well the rest of the print looks compared to the pillars. When I printed this on other printers, the main doorway started to show defects, where the printer was just not able to keep up with the retractions from the pillars. But the KP3S passed this test with flying colors. The layers of the base and door were uniform, and seemingly unaffected by the problems with the pillars. Finally, a few more prints in the silk copper filaments. This Eevee and Dragon were more examples of gorgeous prints from the KP3S. During my testing, there was no prints that I was unhappy with how they turned out. So last up, let's test spiral vase mode. Some printers with power loss detection prevent vase mode prints from printing properly, but there was no issues on the KP3S. It printed vase mode prints perfectly, and it had no issues with printing the full 180mm height either. It is a good looking vase if I do say so myself. I did run into a couple of issues during my testing. I had the extruder clogged twice once when switching filaments, and once about halfway during a print. The first clog was my fault. I broke off a piece of filament while unloading the printer, but I did have to tear down most of the extruder in order to unclog it. Luckily, the KP3S is rather easy to disassemble, so it only took a couple of minutes. Then during the next print, the filament clogged in the hot end itself, requiring another teardown in order to pull the filament out. I don't know if I can attribute that clog to the printer, the filament, my G-code, or any other variable, but I figured I'd share it with you. In conclusion, I found that the King Rune KP3S is an extremely capable small form factor 3D printer. For only 180 US dollars, it produced some very impressive prints. Don't discount the 180 mm cubed print volume, as I think that that size is more than enough for most projects. The magnetic print bed is grippy, and the direct drive extruder with the linear rails gives very consistent prints. The low price point clearly has some trade-offs. It lacks a filament runout detector, and the external power supply and lack of a spool holder is disappointing. But if print quality is the most important factor for you, I think that the KP3S is top of the class. So thank you all for watching my review of the King Rune KP3S 3D printer. If you have any questions about the printer, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you're interested in other small form factor cantilever printers, check out my review of the Ender 2 Pro and the Tron XY Crux 1. I think you'll really enjoy them. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.